from from my side. And it makes it more fun for me and for you. That's fine um, with me. I just restarted the recording. So, yeah. Just know if you talk, you'll be recorded. But there's nothing okay. wrong with that. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's OK. Uh, so everybody can see my screen, yeah? Yep, looks good. Cool. I'm just going to, we're going to go full screen. There we go. Right. OK, so um, the future of travel. So what I was thinking of doing today was we have been stuck at home with the Corona stuff for quite a while now, so we all can't do any real travel. So I thought at least for 15 minutes in my presentation, we can think and talk about travel. So that's why we are going to use that as the theme for the use case and the presentation I'm going to show you today. And with this, it's Dynamics 365 uh, Marketing and Forms Pro. It's the new integration that came in as part of Wave 1 2020 just a few months ago, so April. Uh, but we will go into a bit more detail about this. We'll skip the introduction slides because we did that already. Um, so we'll flick through those and we'll get to, so I think now is the bit where having you guys unmute it would help because what would help is now you know a bit more about me and it would help if we can just do a show hands or just a bit of feedback. Have you guys seen Dynamics 365 marketing before or have you done anything with it? because it will help me structure the rest of it afterwards. I've seen it very high level. I haven't used it at all and not, nothing in depth. OK, did it look OK? Did it look similar to what you were expecting? Uh, about what I was expecting. OK, good. James is saying no. Anybody, oh, so maybe it's easier. Has anybody used it before? Maybe that's an easier way to structure the question. I'm curious on what it, yeah, how it compares to something like uh, click dimensions. Okay, so we can do that. It wasn't going to be part of the surveys. Um, so, in what, on what aspect are you thinking? Well, I, I like um, Aiden. I've only seen it at, at a high level, so I really don't know really what all the. The features are yeah, uh, I th we we have people who specialize in you know implementing it, but I really don't know that much about it, and I ought to know more as a as a architect. And I'm so anything you want to show, I'm really interested in. Yeah, so I think we can definitely because I think how does it compare is is very broad. So I think it's probably better have a look at what we're going to see. And after that, we can flip back to this slide and we can try to compare it on something a bit more specific. Um, but OK, so I don't think too many people have seen it, which means probably we'll go into a bit more detail um, into things like customer journeys uh, when we get to the demo. But Dynamics 365 Marketing, um, the 965 marketing is exactly what it says on the team is Microsoft solution uh, to help with your marketing campaigns. It has all of the features that you would expect from a marketing solution. I have given you that slide with an overview. Hopefully all of those things mean, um, mean something to you so it can do all of that and a bit more. Uh, if you want to know more about any of those, I have done a few blogs. So if there is a specific area of interest, again, get in touch and I can share some more links. So with this in mind, I was going to explain the challenge just so that the demo I show you after that makes a bit more sense. So the challenge we had was to do with surveys, because as we saw on the slide before, Oh, great, loads of great functionality in marketing. Um, it even had the ability to do personalized, so anonymous and non-anonymous surveys as part of the voice of the customer functionality uh, when marketing launched a few years ago. 
but then it got announced that voice of the customer was getting deprecated, which meant for some time we were left in that limbo where um, personalized surveys or non-anonymous surveys were not supported. And we had to do some jiggery pokery to get a non-anonymous surveys, which luckily is not the case anymore. So I think that's what I was going to show you today. A new integration got introduced as part of Wave 1 2020 a few months ago, and that's the integration between Forms Pro and Dynamics 365 Marketing. I would probably expect more people to have seen and heard the Forms Pro. Um, have you guys had much exposure to it before? I've used Forms. I've not used Forms Pro. Cool. Uh, well, I think it's it's very similar, Mike, especially from the way you design uh, surveys. And we'll have a look at the survey in a minute. So I think you see a lot of similarities. Um, yeah, James is saying use both, but not sure of Forms versus Forms Pro. Um, <laughs> one of them talks to marketing, the other one doesn't, James. So from my point of view, there is only one. There only one answer to this. <laughs> so, yeah, Forms Pro, exactly again what it says, uh, what we says on the team and what we expect. It's a feedback management solution, provides a uh, survey capabilities, it, and it's built on top of Microsoft Forms, which means the interface and the UI is very similar to Forms if you are used to seeing that. Um, except for the fact that Forms Pro has integration with CDS and we'll see how now you can see all of your survey responses and invites against the customer profile, which is a quite big selling point from a marketing point of view because a marketing person would want to see all of those interactions against their customer um, just to get that 360 degree view. Are there any questions on marketing versus form for what we just the high level overview we covered before I talk you through the scenario and then we can jump into the system. It's a bit high level, so I, I don't know if I would expect any questions here. So the demo. Um, the, yeah, so the demo is to do with incremental airline. So Incremental Airline is a small travel company, absolutely fictitious, that has been affected by the corona. They've not been able to um, organize any of their travel stuff recently. And now with the measures getting relaxed, they are not sure whether starting up um, their business, uh, restarting the business and organizing trips is a good idea. So they want to ask their customers and they want to know more. What they have decided to do is to do the easiest thing to do is launch a marketing campaign and ask their customers um, whether they're ready to travel, what's their preferred travel date, are they comfortable, and things like that. So they are going to ask two customers. Well, they're going to ask many customers, but we'll look into uh, Abby and Bob. How, how is that for a use case? Does that make sense? Yeah, Aiden is good. nothing. Cool. Does it make sense to everybody else? <laughs> or does yeah. it just make sense? Cool. Do we know what Abby's significant other's name is? Um, John. John. Okay. John. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> John. Um, yeah. Critical detail. <laughs> I know. Attention to detail. Very good. Um, there is no quest in the end. I won't be. I won't ask, be asking in the end what's the name of a significant half in the end. Um, cool. So if that makes sense, I am going to flick through to here. Can you guys see my screen? Can you see a very yeah. purple-looking screen? Yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah. So um, with the marketing campaign we want to launch in mind we need a few building blocks first, and then we'll put them together. The first building block is we need a survey. And I have made you here a very basic survey um, in Forms Pro, 
but what I have tried to do is show you all of the different things or aspects you can do. So you can have your own logo or my face, a picture. You can have branded colors. You can have different font. And it just from a branding point of view, again, you can change the background as well if you want it to be a more branded picture. And you can have quite a few different question types. You can have the radio button. You can have um, this what do we call it, like uh, RT or A, uh, yeah, the question type, this one. We can have the questions where you have to put them in, in the correct order. You can have date type questions, free text, and um, the NPS core as well. So those are the different question types. You can have more than one of each, or and you can also have different sections. If you put a section, it means, so let's say my question one was in a different section, it would just mean they would have to click next to get to the next question. So this is the Forms Pro survey. It's really easy to use, drag and drop, exactly like Forms. Does that make sense? Any questions on the survey before we jump to marketing, to the marketing app? So there's is there branching logic there? If yes. you select one, then the next questions are. Yes, you can, and you can do you can do branching logic based on questions. So you can say if they definitely don't want to use buses, then end the survey, and you can send them somewhere else, um, or you can. Uh, yeah, just skip question two. You can hide questions, show questions, depending on uh, what has happened in the survey beforehand. We have another question from David. Is Forms Pro subscription included with an Office 365 account? I think you get um, 2,000 surveys as part of your subscription. Uh, sorry, 2,000 responses. I think. Uh, so yeah, I'm going with that. I'm going to check and I might retract that later, but I think 2000 responses are included. Okay. I mean, it's the only, the only, I guess what it forms pro versus forms. That's what I don't really understand is, is it just the integration with office 365 and dynamics or is it? So uh, I'll show you in a second. Remind me of that question in the very end when we get to those two, because the timeline against the customer is the bit we are not going to get with forms. Okay. So yeah, just remind me one minute before I, I wrap up the presentation to show you what's not going to show with forms. Cool. So now we have our survey. So the next bet we need to do is to create our campaign. Uh, how am I doing for time, guys? How how much time have I got? Just so that I know how quickly to run through. Uh, as much as you want. We're ahead of schedule. As much. So. Cool. <laughs> okay, good, cool. Uh, right, okay, so marketing app. Now we need to start building our campaign and put a, create an email. And as part of that email, we want to send the survey that I just showed you. So this is how my marketing app looks like. Hopefully, even if you haven't seen it before, it still makes sense because it's got the same look and feel as um, sales and customer service and all of the other ones we are familiar with. Um, so the first thing we need to do if we want to use the integration is we need to have that flick, that switch flicked. And to get there, all we need to do is click on marketing, click on settings, then we need to find the feature switches and we need to have that enabled. It's disabled by default. So the first time we use it, we need it enabled. Once we have enabled it, then what we get is on this screen. So this is how a customer journey looks like. A customer journey, as you can imagine, is your campaign, is the journey that you take your customer on. And the way it works is we build it by dragging different tiles and different building blocks. So for example, I can have I can have a tile for each touch point with the customer. I can have text messages. I can have Viber messages. Um, I can have a marketing email if that's what I want to send them. I can I can have a tile that creates an activity if I want to phone them up and see why they're so angry with the feedback they have given me. It's just a different, different touch points we have with the customers. 
so when we enable the integration that I just showed you, what you get is that extra tile here, the Forms Pro survey. So that's the new bet that showed after the release, uh, Microsoft release in April. The way to use that, so that's the, the tips, the handy tips bet. The way to use that is not the intuitive thing for me was to drag and drop it as you would do with everything else on your market, on your campaign, on your customer journey. We don't use it like that. The way we use it is we drag and drop and put it as part of your uh, mar of your marketing email. So that's how it looks like. Um, and then once you have put it in, then going to the property tab, um, going to the property tabs gives you a lookup and that has a link to all of your um, surveys that you have created in your Forms Pro portal. So that's where you would pick the survey that you want to be sending. This is from a customer journey point of view and I will show you I will show you a slightly more complex customer journey which is already live. So once the customer journey has gone live it means that it has started processing customers. A customer journey always starts with a segment. A segment is just a way of grouping people together. A segment could be all of your P, all of your customers who have not opened any emails from you in the last three months. Could be all of the people who live in Glasgow. Could be behavior. Could be demographic. Could be any sorts of grouping of your customers. So we have our segment. That's what group of people will send on our journey. What I want to do here is I want to send them a marketing email, which I will show you how it looks like in a second, or I'll show you my one. Uh, as part of this, we are sending the survey and then we can also do cool things like triggers based on the survey. An example here I wanted to show you was we can have a trigger based on have they submitted the feedback? And if, if, if they have, they go on the yes branch, so on this branch, and if they haven't, they go on the no branch. For example, I can see I had two customers in my segment, two customers received the email, which we'll see in a minute, um, but only, so then both of them um, came to this style, but only one, so then the next step is to check have we got happy customers, yes or no? Happy customer at the moment is based on who said uh, that they would recommend us to a friend 10. So when their score is 10, that counts as a happy customer. So they'll go on this branch and we can send them a text message with, with a travel voucher or something. If they say no, what we can do is we can schedule up an activity to follow up and see what went wrong with that relationship. And that's again, it's just an example here. In my example, if they didn't submit the feedback at all, they're probably not that interested. So we could wait for three weeks because we don't want to harass them too much and we can send them another newsletter um, later on. So this is an example of how not too complex, but kind of sophisticated customer journey would look like. There is so much more functionality behind customer journeys, but from customer journeys and surveys, does that kind of make sense? Because the next step is to jump to the email bit and just show you how that looks like very quickly before we wrap up. Yeah. Do you I like customer journeys? Good. Yeah, it's really cool. I love customer journeys. They're quite fun. <laughs> I get very excited when I talk about marketing, guys. Yeah, you, yeah, people are used to it here. So now the next bet is email. So I have made just an example email here. It could look like this, but the important bet is that one here, and I will show you it in a second. So. This is how the email looks like in um, in the browser or in their inbox. And this is the email designer that we are, uh, that's where we are designing the email before we send it. So it's got all of the usual stuff with, you can add pictures, you can have different sections, different fonts, 
the important bit from a survey point of view is this bit here. So again, that comes as part of the that came as part of the integration in April. Um, and the way it works is, as with everything else, you just need to drag and drop it wherever you want it to go. I already have one here. So clicking on that gives you this. And again, it got a lookup where you can select what survey, uh, what link. Yeah, what's the link that you want to send behind that button? I want my one to be the future of travel. And if I wanted it to be anonymous, I would click it here. But it's much more fun to be a uh, not anonymous because I also want to show you the timeline because that timeline is what you don't get with um, you don't get with the normal forms. You only get with Forms Pro. So. Are we OK with adding the survey onto the email? Aiden is still nodding, so that's always a good sign. Yep, following so far. Is everybody following or is Aiden yeah. just following? Yeah, <laughs> right. OK, good, <laughs> good, <laughs> good. Uh, cool. So let's see uh, if we jump to the next bit. Yeah, so I wanted to show you again how so now where we have got to is we have our campaign, we have sent it to two people and we want to see what they have been up to, which is probably easiest to see on the Forms Pro portal side of things. Well, we'll see it in both, but if we do the Forms Pro first, so this is where I have to two tabs. I have my questions, which is the one I showed you earlier with all of the question types. We also get the responses tab. So here, if I click on invitations, for example. Oh, there we go. So once we are logged in, what we'll see is how we have sent the survey both to um, Abby and Bob, and we can also see how Bob has already responded. But Abby, we have sent the invitation, but she hasn't responded. Um, so we have some insights as well. We can even drink, we, we can extra, it's the same as I think with forms as well. You can export it to Excel, you can drill down, you have a bit of analytics as well. You have some uh, dashboards to look at as well. But that's just classic forms pro, it's not to do with the integration. The part that is usually quite, it's usually the bit that people that we do demos to quite like it is. So this bit is, and that's the last bit I was going to show you in the system. So this is Bob Bob's profile from the marketing system point of view. So going to Bob's contact, we have that timeline here. So we can see that we have sent them a, an invite against their timeline, and we can also see that they have responded. On Abby's profile, we only get the invite because obviously she hasn't responded yet. And if we go, for example, I think I had it open. If we go to the responses bit, it is, so that's something that um, got released quite recently, and I got super excited about it because I'm very visual. I like things to be in colors and to be visual. So it was really good to see how on the on the responses record you have that link to Bob, you have the link to the survey, you have a bit of analytics, so you have the MPS score as ten. Um, you have a bit of senti sentiment. I think that uses some AI to analyze the language in all of your text fields. I think it only analyzes text fields, but you get some AI for free as well. And you also have the visual representation of the survey with the answers. So we can see that they said they agree masks should be mandatory. And we have all of the answers and we have a bit of color to see how likely they recommend us to a friend. So we have that. Um, those analytics as well. And this is the bit we don't get with forms because it's not integrated with um, CDS and hence with marketing or sales or customer service or whatever, uh, either of those apps. Does 
that makes sense. The, the, I think I think that was the last bit I was going to show you. I was only going to show you an invite as well, but it's got a bit less detail and it doesn't have all of the, I think the responses is much more fun to look at from just purely from a visual point of view and colors. Is that from a scenario point of view? Because now we have kind of completed the scenario. We made a survey, we made an email that points to that survey, we made a customer journey that sends the survey, we had our two customers in the segment, we send them on the journey, they jump through the different tiles, and one of them received a voucher because they are very likely to recommend us to a friend. Does it make sense from a scenario point of view? I have one slide to show you for housekeeping, but I think this was the the main bit I wanted you to see from integration point of view. Yeah, I think it definitely makes sense. Is that kind of what you were expecting or were you expecting more or less from the integration between the two products? Yeah, I was I was more wondering what like kind of what Jim said was the difference between forms and forms pro and whether we need to upgrade our license to forms pro because like we could do the same thing right with forms and then create a power automate flow to push stuff into dynamics. So I was just, I, I was kind of wondering what the, what the benefit of Forms Pro is over Forms. I think if you, yeah, no, it, it I think it depends how heavy you want to customize it. If you're using the marketing app, I think Forms Pro kind of makes sense because then you can use it as part of a customer journey and it just, it, it just makes sense. If you're not using marketing, it's probably more debatable. Yeah. So the um, the Forms Pro, all the entities for that, they live in Dynamics or in CDS. So you can do advanced finds on them. You don't have to write an integration to move it to move the responses from Forms to CDS. It already lives there. So you might have to do something to try and match up like a survey response to a respondent, um, but the data itself about what they answered already lives there. Um, okay. And that's whether you use it in, the, in relation to the marketing app or not, all that data still lives there as a traditional you know, CRM entity. Yeah. yeah, we did that on a project before and we matched, yeah, because that was exactly the challenge. The challenge was how do you match what contact when you submit, when you get a response, how do you match um, what customer in your uh, system that came from? And we did it on email and it worked. It worked okay, but it only worked because we were specifically asking for emails. And we did get a few scenarios where it didn't work very well because they would forget. They would give us one email at first and then they would put their work email or their other email. Um, so yeah, I think there are use cases for for both. I'm going to ask a really loaded question. And oh, licensing probably. Because we're all we're all dynamics people. We're all power apps people. We're all on board and um, you know. I don't. So what do you think about dynamics marketing? Like as opposed to <laughs> click dimensions, as opposed to other marketing, because I haven't worked with it that much. And to be honest with you, I, I really like I, I wouldn't know like if, if a customer asked me, I wouldn't know if I should recommend it or not versus other platforms. Well, so for specifically that's, for that's too loaded and you know you don't have to you don't have to answer it, but just it's wondering. okay. It's it's, I think at this point, I'm kind of used to it because I don't think I have ever been to an event when people did, haven't asked me to compare click dimensions and marketing. So I think by now it's just, is this question coming in the end or in the beginning? Right. Um, um, so uh, what I can do is I can put in the chat, we, we recorded a podcast with somebody from click dimensions with Emma. So, and they called it when the worlds collide and it's a horrible name because that's so not the point. Um, but I think the podcast, it's hour and a half, so you might get bored halfway through. But what we try to do is we try to come hearing Emma talk. Emma yeah. Talk. Well, so what we did was we tried to compare because 
there are things where marketing, dynamics marketing is much better at, and there are things where click dimensions is much better at. So if you're just going to send loads of emails and just do a bulk email campaigns, then a uh, click dimensions is cheaper and better because it's easier. But if you're going to go into more targeted, so what I was showing you with, if this happens, then you, if, if you're going to take them on a journey and you want to have, if they click this link, then you want to do something else. But if they don't click the link, then do something else. And the segmentation on that, then marketing is much stronger. Again, events, probably marketing is, we went that into in in the podcast. There are different types of events because Click Dimensions has a different vision of what event is um, than marketing. So there are different types of events that you would do. We would recommend marketing for and different types of events that customer might be hosting. Where Click Dimensions is probably the easier option. Okay. Cool. Yeah, it'd be good to watch that. Thank you. Yeah. All right, awesome. Uh, are there any other questions before we take a break? Quick, quick question on um, on whether the the marketing what what email server did the marketing messages come from? Is it like a a separate server or is it the Exchange server of the client? Okay, so I know, I'll tell you what I know, and I think this will help you answer your question. There is, it's definitely not a def different, I think it's exchange server because you don't need one. You can just install marketing and then what you do is you authenticate your domain, but it doesn't go through your server. So I think it goes through a, a Microsoft server because all you need to do to send emails is authenticate your domain, but you don't need to a point to any other server. Okay. Does, does that help? Because I'm yeah. not really sure about Exchange Bed, but I know you don't need to install or point any other configuration except for authenticate your domain. Yeah, I think Click Dimensions is the same way. Yeah, and it's all managed with, by Microsoft because and they have a lot of guidance around how they don't want, they want you to warm up your domain after you authenticate it. They don't want you to send loads of emails. They want you to ramp it up um, gradually. Uh, but yeah, so there is loads of recommendations how how to not get into the, onto the, onto the naughty list. It's very complicated. Yeah, I, I've, I've looked at that and it seems like it's, well, it's the configuration tough. side is really easy. It's just how not to mess it up afterwards. And we have never had that, but apparently if you get it bad, then Microsoft get in touch and suggest even stronger measures. Okay. Yeah, we're we're trying to deal with that in, in my office too. We've oh, got... did you get contacted by them? No, did you no, get no, in no. trouble? We're, we're using click dimensions and like we've uh. had We've had them report us as, you know, things bouncing back as spam and because someone else was using the same server to send spam. And then we've had, like, we've been blocked by various groups because they know that Click Dimensions is, you know, sometimes sends spam. Well, so this, I think that what you touched on, and I really don't like saying that one product is better or worse because they're very different, but that is one of the points where Click Dimensions um, it's easier to maintain. So, for example, with block lists, you uh, with click dimensions, you have more um, more authority over that. You can unblock um, unblock domains, and with marketing, you can do that yourself. Okay. Well, I'm sure that's a whole other presentation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but for example, yeah, we can't really finish a marketing presentation with click dimensions is better. So another point where a different site where dynamics marketing is stronger would be in if you want dynamic uh, content in your email. So for example, for that uh, dynamics marketing offers much better capabilities. What we can do is we can show one, so if we know our customer likes beer, we can give them a picture of a beer and a section of 
something to do with beer. If we think they like the beach, we can show them a completely different piece of content that's something to do with the beach. So all of that, and that happens dynamically. You don't need to do anything after you set it up. So if that's something you want to go, a route that you want to go down um, and target your customers that way, from a personalization point of view, dynamics marketing is stronger. But there are use cases for both. All right, awesome. I'm so probably well over time. <laughs> a few minutes. So um, Kylie had to step out for a minute, but um, actually Kylie is back. But I think it's a good time to uh, take a break. I think we'll uh, say an eight-minute break. We'll come back at 25 minutes after the hour. Um, Didi, thank you so much for.